To, to start with, uh, just go through very quickly uh, um, the different products and, and things. A as a company um, in the material handling space and an AGV supplier, we have vehicles that work in a manufacturing environment as well as in food and beverage, pharmaceutical and, and other environments. So, so our focus is really, as an AGV company is, providing alternative uses for material handling solutions instead of conveyor or tow lines or a fork truck moving product around, automating that with uh, you know, uh, some form of robotic uh, uh, movement using an automatic guided vehicle and the different technologies. Um, this is a, a quick view of a lot of the, uh, the man <coughs> manufacturing type AGVs used in assembly lines, building cars, refrigerators, you know, there's a neighbor down the street here called Whirlpool. They use a lot of our product building their furnaces, air conditioners, refrigerators, stoves, and so forth. And so there's a lot of different things that you can do with, with automatic guided vehicles. Um, we've got a, a whole line of conveyor deck type vehicles as well. Um, one of the, uh, the units that you'll see here in the, the demonstration this morning is our 300 uh, single conveyor deck unit. This thing can be retrofitted with dual conveyors for a palletizing system. The dual conveyors can be front and back or side to side, so we can customize the, uh, the vehicles for whatever the application is that, uh, that you're looking to, to do. Um, we've got a, a new unit, uh, um, a unit load. This is a, a tunneling vehicle as well as a uh, carrying uh, vehicle, so it will actually carry the load on its back, similar to the, the conveyor deck unit in the demo here only we're tunneling in and out of frames uh, with a lift deck on it, picking the load up and moving it. Instead of using powered conveyor for the transfer, it's got a, a pick and drop system. Full line of warehousing type vehicles, uh, pallet jacks, tuggers, counterbalance fork vehicles, straddle vehicles for not only picking loads up at a palletizing station, but being able to pick up loads off of the floor, put them on the floor, doing deep lane storage in a warehouse, putting loads away in the rack, in the, uh, the warehouse, picking parts out of the rack, bringing them out to the, uh, to the floor or in the, the production process. So again, it's a full fleet of automatic guided vehicles, depending on what your application is. And you can use the same uh, system, uh, which is one of the things that we kind of tout ourselves with uh, uh, compared to a lot of the other companies that are out there is you go through one learning curve, whether you're using a, a fork uh, type AGV or an assembly AGV, the application software and everything is identically the same across the entire platform. So you, customers have one learning curve and you can bring things in in the manufacturing environment as well as the warehouse and distribution and, and you're, you're using the same software. Um, one of the other things that, uh, uh, that we're demonstrating uh, are they going to talk about with our automatic guided vehicles is the technology that we use for putting a system together. Um, we're one of the few companies in the uh, uh, um, country in this market space that provides multiple different scenarios or solutions for you. Not everybody wants to use the same technology. So from the automatic guided vehicle perspective, we have, offer four different types of technologies. Natural feature navigation, magnetic navigation, laser navigation, and inertial navigation. Depending on what your application is and what are the obstacles and issues that you're faced with, that will help determine what is the best technology. In this particular one for, uh, uh, that MCR is showing here, this is using the magnetic uh, navigation. This is what the customer uh, purchased. Um, natural feature navigation is a technology where we're using laser sensors and as we're driving down the, uh, the path or in the aisles, we're using the laser to detect building columns, uh, racking systems, fencing around robots. We're detecting all of that and then we're creating a guide path for the vehicle from everything that we're sensing. Laser navigation in a traditional form, you would have reflective targets uh, that would be mounted in different parts of your operation. As the laser scanner rotates around, it will recognize those targets, know where it's at in the guide path and guide the, uh, the vehicle down the, uh, the aisles. Inertial navigation, the fourth one, similar type, only you're using RFID plugs or tags that are uh, put in the floor. They're about the size of your thumb. Drill a hole, drop the RFID tag, and as the vehicle is driving down the aisle, it will cross over the, uh, the RFID tag, 
recognize where it's at in the guide path for, for its guidance. So using the four different technologies, there's probably not many applications that we can't cover with, the, with one or four of those technologies. And in some cases, we actually combine a couple of the applications or a couple of the technologies together. This just shows uh, some of the, the, the vehicles. Um, one of the things that I want to address real quickly is safety. Safety is a very, very big part of any automation, whether it's us using automatic guided vehicles, FANUC with the robots. Nobody wants to take safety for granted. And you'll notice on our vehicles, with all the different laser bumpers and things, we cover and protect operators and customers 360 degrees around all of our vehicles, making sure that we don't run into anything or we don't run into any person. And if anybody does step into the safety zones, no matter what the vehicle is doing, the vehicle will recognize them and be able to shut down and put the, uh, the vehicle in, the, in a safe position. So with that, uh, um, why don't we start up the, uh, the demo and we can watch the, uh, the vehicle do its, uh, its guide path and, and uh, the MCRI people can explain how the system is working for you. Off now, so I can talk. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Kevin Hart, application engineer here at Motion. Um, just a little bit about this system. Uh, we have an MDR conveying loop, motor driven roller um, that is feeding six different infeed lines. Um, they're going three infeeds per two unitizers. This is a FANUC um, M410 140H with a unigripper blowing a plenum tool on it. Each of the Unitizers is a multi-case gripper and it is placing them on slip sheets that the tool is also handling with vacuum cup uh, generation. Um, once the complete unit is um, full, you will see it communicate to the SAM system. It will convey out and then convey onto one of the Dekuka vehicles for it to deliver to a stretch wrapping unit. Um, future plans for additional unitizers here, and we obviously have the two here. Um, everything on the command is close center roller, CDLR, because of the slip sheet requirements, um, but we can also do it on the pallet with the robot handling pallets as well. So after dropping off um, the finish unit load to the stretch wrap area, the cart will then return to one of the different charging areas for it to get another assignment um, to pick up from one of the different lines. Okay. Thank you. So you can see a pretty simple transition um, as an alternative using a, a fork truck and uh, that technology. Um, with the, the conveyors, the, the communication amongst the, uh, the AGVs to the robotic uh, uh, palletizing systems is typically done uh, through a, a PLC interface with our, our system controller and everything is done and communicated through uh, wireless ethernet uh, in the, the system. So each vehicle is set up for, uh, for doing that. Um, the SAM system that uh, was talked about, that's our, our system controller. It sits on a server um, somewhere either on the plant floor, sometimes uh, the IT people like it in their, uh, in their room with the rest of their servers. And again, it's a wireless ethernet communications uh, technology. SAM system itself, one, it always knows where all the automatic guided vehicles are. Um, the uh, signal from a PLC actually talks to the, uh, the SAM system. SAM then broadcasts the messages and the commands via wireless out to the, uh, the AGVs telling them where to go which location. So as it's rounding the, the track, 
it will automatically know which one of the palletizing you know, or which one of the roller stations has the load ready for pickup so that it goes to the right one. And then if you've, if you've got multiple locations for drop off, it'll also then tell it which one to, uh, to drop off at. Um, inside of the, uh, the system controller package, from a uh, uh, production perspective, you've got a lot of reports. So you can find out how efficient your system is running throughout the, uh, the day generating all different types of production reports and history reports. If the laser bumper is tripped multiple times, uh, operators or, or somebody drops a load and the bumper is tripped, if the plant manager wants to know why was my system down for 10 minutes, you can actually go in and you can pull up the reports and you can find out the detail, the time of day, how long the vehicle was down, why it was down and so forth, you know, so that you've got something to uh, uh, use to try and fix the, uh, the problem or remedy the, uh, the situation. Um, on the slide here, I've got uh, a couple of uh, other applications uh, similar. This is a uh, um, palletizing system for Anheuser-Busch. This is a, a lights out warehousing system. We did this system uh, with Anheuser-Busch uh, back in uh, early 2000s. I think this one was implemented in around 2004, 2005. This was the first system of its kind anywhere in the, in the world. It's a, uh, about 36 uh, unmanned vehicles. It's a lights out warehouse. Every 24 hours, the automatic guided vehicles move more than 8,000 pallets of beer and they automatically load more than 226 trailers of beer and send them on their way. Uh, and there's you know, only maintenance people that are around the, uh, the system. So if you watch the screen, you'll see the uh, um, uh, the PLC will uh, eventually call the, uh, from the stretch wrapper, calls in, uh, here we're carrying two loads at a time for the, on this, uh, in this palletizing application. This was a vehicle that was uh, um, designed specifically for Anheuser-Busch. When, uh, when they had come to us, they wanted to, uh, the ability to get rid of their fork trucks in the plant because the entire operation was completely automated except back in the warehousing portion of it. And so they implemented uh, a full system of AGVs. Uh, what's going on here now is it's actually carrying the load inside the, uh, the over the road trailer and then uh, putting them in. This is what they're warehousing, everything's stacked on the floor. So our system controller is constantly communicating with their order entry system, filling the orders and you know, pinwheeling the, uh, the, the product inside the, uh, the tractor trailer so as it's driving down the road, you don't get product shifting around in, on the, uh, the trailer, um, making it safe for the driver uh, carrying the, uh, the, the load. As you see, it's, it's moving the load out to the sides of the walls, sensing that, and then also when it moves forward, it's using encoders and things to get feedback so that it doesn't smash the product uh, going through the, the system. This is another part of their operation where again, using automatic guided vehicles instead of uh, traditional fork trucks. This is in their can plants, one of their, their can plants. So they're stacking the empty aluminum cans 36 feet in the air. Um, so if you can imagine a warehouse, three, 400,000 square feet and it's nothing but aluminum cans on a slip sheet. And these aluminum cans are made in one facility and then they're shipped out to all the different breweries and things for getting uh, beer and, and stuff put in them. But uh, this part of the application uh, at the, the can plant, we're doing full warehousing, taking everything off. There's a slip sheet in between each layer of the empty aluminum, and then uh, uh, just a couple bands going around it, no stretch wrap or, or anything. And you can see each load, nine foot tall. And again, so you got 36 feet of empty aluminum cans and, and you can get an idea looking at the spacing between the, uh, the loads, how accurate the AGV is. Um, in this case, for, for this particular client, density was a very critical part of the operation. We had to be able to get everything smashed in there as tight as possible for all the, uh, um, all the product. All right, I'll be hanging around here and uh, I've got a, uh, one of my colleagues, Ken Otten, is here and we can answer any questions about uh, this application or the, uh, the, any of the other vehicles. Thank you.